Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about build fights, how to get started, how to get better, how to avoid common mistakes, and finish off with some of the most useful building patterns. This video ended up being a lot longer than I intended. It turns out build fights are complicated, so I've added some timestamps here and in the video description. Huge build battles happen all the time in solos, duos, and squad games. These days even Team Rumble starts looking like downtown Tokyo after 5 minutes. If you're the kind of player who avoids these fights, you're missing out. Build fights are really fun, but it takes some practice to get started. So of course you have to know some basics if you want to start build fighting. If you struggle with the basics, check out my series on building. I tried to cover common building tricks from beginner to advanced levels. But if you can at least do 90s, 180s, simple cone jumps, you're off to a great start. Just know that the goal of your building isn't just to take high ground, but to use your building to trap, block, and herd your opponent. If you're able to control the flow of a build fight, you can force your opponent to make predictable choices and take advantage of their mistakes. That being said, even if you aren't a strong builder, hop into creative mode and challenge your friends to some build battles. Set up two ramps with a wall in between. Edit an arch, build one ramp out, and then start the fight. These fights are perfectly balanced and let you practice your building, editing, movement, and aim, all while focusing on your one-on-one -on -one strategy. If you don't have friends to play with, or if you're looking to practice in a more realistic setting, playground mode is the best way to practice. With third parties, W key psychos, and AR sprayers, you get a great feel for how build fights play out in real game modes. To get the best practice, hop in a playground lobby and set up a build battle server. Make sure to dance while it loads, you'll want to attract all 15 players to make it as chaotically fun as possible. If you don't have a server, feel free to use mine. With 16 spawn pads on 8 different build battle arenas, all 16 players in the playground can have an isolated one-on-one -on -one build fight. Usually though, half the server decides to have a huge deathmatch in the middle of the map. It's a great time. And it's also why the match resets every 12 minutes or when a player reaches 15 kills. Fighting in creative and playground is the best way to improve. It doesn't matter how much you practice building by yourself, if you're not practicing under pressure, you won't perform very well when you get into real fights. While you practice, just make sure that you're thinking about the next step to improve your gameplay. This means that in Playground, don't go for the high score. Practice new building patterns, smart edits, efficient movement, or just practice aiming for headshots. Let's say you know how to build more than just 90s, you already practice in Playground or Creative, but you just can't seem to improve. You probably need to work on your tracking and spacing. Good tracking requires proper crosshair placement and awareness, combined with efficient camera movement. The biggest mistake I see players making in their build fights has to do with awareness. All too often, players are surprised when you peek them from low ground or drop down next to them. In these situations, they weren't even looking. It sounds like the simplest thing to do, just look at your opponent, but building can make that difficult. Most builds require you to look a certain direction. With double ramps, you have to look forward. With 90s, you have to look down and turn. It's pretty easy to get so caught up in building that you forget to actually look at your opponent. So try to take quick breaks. Stop building, turn and spot your opponent, then get back to cranking out 90s. If you're not looking at the player, you won't be able to block them when they peek you, and you won't be able to punish them when they make a mistake. It's like playing a fighting game blindfolded. You won't win the fight by just haphazardly spamming different attacks. Once you're comfortable looking around while build fighting, you need to take it a step further. The enemy player shouldn't just be somewhere on your screen, they need to be behind your crosshair. Build fights are chaotic. They get weird, they get awkward, you might think you're completely safe and covered, but out of nowhere a player could pop up in front of you with a quick edit, phase through a ramp, and body you before you realize what even happened. If that player isn't on your screen, you lose the fight. If they're on your screen, it could be a 50-50, but if their head is behind your crosshair, you're the best player in the game. If you've ever watched professional Fortnite players, you might have noticed how they flick their screen around really fast when they build, edit, or just while running around looking for enemies. Turning this quickly doesn't make you build or edit faster. What it does do is let you keep your screen still for longer. With a stationary screen, you can spot targets much more easily. Let's say you're looking at a forest, trying to find a bird in a tree. If you look around smoothly like this, things get blurry and it's hard to spot small details. If you look around normally, things look more clear and it's much easier to spot movement. Now pretend your screen is an eyeball. It doesn't make sense to look around smoothly. If your eyes worked like that, people would think you're weird and creepy. So instead, try to turn with faster movements like a real-life eyeball, making sure to keep your screen still as often as possible. During build fights, these short breaks let you quickly spot your enemy in between builds. On top of that, keeping your screen still makes it much easier to actually land shots when an enemy shows himself. If you try to quickly shoot a target while turning, your aim is affected by your turn. More reason to jerk your camera around and keep it still for longer. Spacing is all about managing the distance between you and your opponent. There are a bunch of cool looking flashy retakes out there, but it doesn't matter how many Martas reverse 90s you do if you don't choose the right moments. 
Something I see quite often is players misjudging the reach of their builds. For example, if you're three levels below a high ground player, cone jump 90s do nothing but give up free damage. So if you are too low, either fake a knockdown or climb up normally until you're close enough to try for a retake. If you focus on good spacing, you'll find that your high ground retakes start actually retaking high ground. The same idea is true for the high ground. If you're just one level above a player, they might be able to pull off a flashy retake or trap you inside a box. If you can keep yourself just on the edge of their retake reach, you can counter that play, surprise them, and send them straight back to the lobby. Be careful though. It's good to keep some distance when you have high ground, but that doesn't mean you need to keep climbing. Once you have high ground, you need to focus on blocking your opponent and finding chip shots in between builds. If you just keep building up, you're going to lose track of your opponent, they'll knock you down, heal up, or just sneak up behind you since you're too busy cranking out 90s. From high ground, you've got the potential to land huge headshots while exposing very little of your body. But if the low ground player manages to cover themselves well enough, you might never find the chance to shoot them. Fortunately though, part of what makes high ground so powerful is drop shots. Don't be afraid to drop down to the side and take a shot. Sometimes that pressure is enough to slow a player down. This lets you climb straight back up to high ground for free. Spacing yourself too far away is bad, but spacing too close can be worse. If you and your opponent have the same health, same guns, and you find yourselves fighting in the same box, it doesn't matter who survives, you both lost the build fight. Box fights are too cramped to be played skillfully. Even if you own a ramp inside, the fight can be messy, and you're really just tossing a coin to decide who lands the luckier headshot. So if you do find yourself in a 50-50 box fight, you need to ask yourself, how can I get out of this box without taking damage? If you choose the right edits, you can accomplish a lot more from outside of the box. Your camera isn't as cramped, and you've got a lot more space to use movement to your advantage. If you feel like your tracking and spacing are perfect, but you still aren't improving, you might be fighting the wrong players. If you lose build fights over and over against the same player, that player is probably much more experienced. In most cases, you won't even understand how they killed you. You won't be able to learn anything from fighting them again, so head back to the lobby and go into replay mode. You'll be able to see how that player took high ground, how they moved, or how they made edit plays. Use the replay to figure out what that player did right, and then try to copy it yourself. You'll find that the next time a player uses that strategy, you'll recognize it and have a better chance of countering it. If you're winning build fights too easily, try and find some way to handicap yourself. These are build fights, not the World Cup. There's no point grinding for a high score, so instead of stomping a weaker player, start practicing some tricks that you don't normally use. Give up high ground and try to use some of the building tricks that you've been working on. Focus on safe low ground peaks and making quick, unpredictable edits. Even in public solos or arena games, if you know you're going to win a build fight either way, try to do something new. Go for a bludgeon kill, go for a 360 no scope. Your goal shouldn't just be to win the fight, but to win the fight in the most spectacular way possible. And that extra effort, even against inexperienced players, that's what changes you from a consistently decent player to the kind of player who can perform under pressure and make clutch plays even when all the odds are stacked against you. During build fights, most mistakes have to do with tunnel vision. If a player has tunnel vision, it means they're focusing so much on one part of the fight that they forget or ignore everything else. Even in solo games, build fights often involve more than just two players. If you've dealt some damage in a build fight, there's no guarantee you'll be able to finish the fight quickly. Still though, a lot of players focus way too hard on confirming that kill, and they end up dying to a third party. So if a third party player does start pressuring you in this situation, you need to think about giving up the race for high ground and giving some attention to that other player. In every build fight, there's a small handful of moments when two players have direct line of sight on each other. These small windows give you a chance to land a chip shot. These shots often decide who wins a build fight, but they're hard to hit. Sometimes you only have a fraction of a second to react, so you have to be ready. Stop focusing so hard on taking high ground and try to get in the habit of pulling out your shotgun between every build. Two common chip shots to practice are ramp overs and cone jumps. When your opponent ramps over you, you can jump to the side, shoot, block them with a wall, and land on a floor all in one fluid motion. You can do the same thing with a cone jump. With practice, you'll reach the point where you feel comfortable in build fights. You're landing chip shots, you've got good spatial awareness, and you don't make too many mistakes when you build or edit. That's a great spot to be in. At that level, the only thing you need to focus on is balancing your playstyles. Your playstyle is often shaped by your opponents. If you always fight more experienced players, you'll learn to build fight defensively. Strong defense is great. It teaches you to watch your opponent and react to their plays. It teaches you to predict edits or find chip shots on players trying to take high ground. A lot of players win games by just boxing up and waiting for their opponent to make a mistake. 
It's a powerful strategy, but it only works if your opponent plays offensively. If no one makes a move, no one wins the fight. You'll run out of materials, you'll get third partied, or you'll both survive long enough to die in the storm. This means you need to start making aggressive plays. The next time you find yourself stuck on defense, make an edit, go for a retake. Even if you mess it up, the change of pace might confuse your opponent. They might make a mistake, and that could be all you need. Just like those players who get stuck playing defense, other players are often stuck playing offense. I think this happens because these offensive players haven't learned that good mechanics and good strategy are two different things. And I'll try to explain what I mean by that. If you've been playing Fortnite for a long time, you've probably fought a lot of bad players. Against a bad player, the fight plays out in pretty much the same way every time. You'll win the fight because you had better aim, stronger building, and faster edits. You didn't win the fight because you made better plays, you won the fight because you had better mechanics. As you fight more and more bad players, your mechanics will get even better, but you'll start playing on autopilot. Let's say a player boxes up mid-build fight. If you're playing on autopilot just using muscle memory, it's gonna look like this. You replace the roof, replace the wall, edit the wall, block them with the ramp, edit the ramp to force a left-hand peek, and then shoot them in the head. Boom! Easy. You've done it a hundred times. And that's a great sequence of moves to get comfortable with, but what happens if that player has better mechanics than you? They'll edit themselves away and you'll never catch them. Or they'll force a 50-50 fight and just out-aim you. So at this point, you need to focus less on mechanics and more on strategy. And this is where the fun begins. When you fight a player with equally strong mechanics, the only way to win the fight decisively is through a combination of awareness, patience, and fakes. If your mechanics are good enough, you should be able to make your standard aggressive builds and edits while also watching your opponent. Being aware of what weapon they're holding or what direction they're facing helps you make the right decisions. For example, if you see a player holding their shotgun after you take their wall, it might not be the best idea to full peek the edit. If you can develop awareness while playing aggressively in build fights, you'll be able to predict plays and counter them. But this requires something that a lot of mechanically gifted W key psychos don't have, and that's patience. There are loads of talented and aggressive players out there whose playstyles are relentless. They put constant pressure on you, they try to take your walls, they make immediate edits one after the other, and during the whole fight they're always doing something. And it might seem like a good idea to control the fight that well, but it's risky. Every time you build, every time you edit, every time you smash a wall, you run the risk of being predicted and countered. If you make constant day. aggressive plays back to back, not only are you creating opportunities for a counterplay, you're making a predictable pattern. And that's exactly what a defensive opponent wants. You need to break that pattern. Stop moving, take your shotgun out, and see if your opponent uses that moment to do something. Depending on what they do, you might be able to counter that something and find an advantage. If they don't do anything, you still broke the pattern. With just a half second pause in your pressure, you made yourself less predictable, and you made it much harder for your opponent to counter your next play. There's a simple example of this that happens all the time. If you have high ground on a player, sometimes you just know that they're going to try to ramp over you. And to counter that, you could block them with a cone before they even build the ramp. Then you could edit that cone and maybe find some damage. But a good defensive player can protect themselves, so what could you do better? If you know your opponent wants to build a ramp, just let them build the ramp. You do risk losing high ground, but they risk getting stuck under your cone and inside your walls. If you find yourself struggling to confirm kills quickly, chill out for a second and look for a counterplay. It's often more effective to turn an opponent's play against them rather than make the first play yourself. If you constantly shut down every play your opponent makes, you'll find that there aren't any plays for you to counter. The next step here with the goal of finding counterplays, instead of just waiting for your opponents to make a play, force them to make a play. You can do this with fake building, fake edits, or fake movement. Try things like ramping out left, then going right. You might bait a player into looking the wrong direction. Try making edits and then quickly resetting them. You might bait a player into shooting and find a free shot yourself. If you can bait your opponents into doing what you want, and then quickly make counterplays, you'll find that you can win fights without taking any damage at all. It's hard to give specific tips when it comes to strategy, but there are some great building tricks that help you keep control, stay protected, and bamboozle your opponents during build fights. The first trick isn't really a trick, but it's important to know that you can place cones really far away, like stupid far. You can block a ramping opponent two layers above you. You can also place a cone above the opposite side of a wall. And if you face a box diagonally, you can place a cone all the way from the opposite corner of the floor. Understanding this range helps you find sneaky opportunities to block opponents in build fights. 
I saw this trick in a video by Parallel Connor. Block your ramp with a cone, edit the back two tiles, then jump to the left or right, dragging three more pyramids around to the back side. Place two walls and land on a ramp. This trick traps unsuspecting players in build fights all the time. Once you're comfortable placing cones, practice placing a cone with a floor and try to edit through both of them. It takes some practice, but you'll find that these double edits open up a bunch of new retake options. It might seem excessive, but editing through all these pieces is the only way to prevent your opponent from blocking you. If you don't block yourself, they will. You can edit left, right, straight through, or straight up. This one's tough. As you jump, you have to reset the edit selection, edit the corner tile, and confirm the edit before your jump reaches its peak. Sometimes you can't make quick edits, sometimes your opponent blocks your ramp. In these kinds of situations, you might find it best to cone jump. The most protected way of cone jumping looks like this. Jump, immediately turn to place a wall behind you, then look down and place a floor and a ramp. From here, drag walls as you turn back towards the cone, look down to place a floor and ramp to boost you up, then extend the pattern with two more ramps and cones. The great thing about this retake is how fast it is. Against an average player, you can take high ground before they realize what you did. Even if your opponent is two layers above you, this cone jump can trap them if you extend it with ramps and cones. Try not to start a build fight with a cone jump, it can be predictable. It's better to cone jump out of previous builds and edits. My favorite cone jump retake sequence looks like this. As you double ramp from low ground, you might need to turn left or right. A great way to do that is by placing cones above your top ramp and connecting ramps to those cones. Place a floor and bottom ramp as you make the turn, then edit through the floor. Since this turn keeps you in a double ramp, it can be easily chained into double edits, cone jumps, or the Connor Classic. The Connor Classic is a safe way to climb out of a double ramp. As you double ramp, edit the top ramp, jump, confirm the edit, and catch the ramp with a wall so it doesn't break. This trick keeps you protected, but it also gives you a chance to spot your opponent, since you can see through your ramp while you hold the edit. There are four different variations of the Connor Classic that you might want to learn. The first is this standard 90 into ramps and cones. The ramps and cones keep you from getting blocked off, and they sometimes trap enemies. In this second variation, instead of a 90, build a wall and cone to block yourself, and continue double ramping to the side. This is a great mix-up to use when you feel like a standard high ground retake would get blocked. The third variation is a way to immediately climb out of a cone turn. After a cone turn, you could double ramp again and Connor Classic out of it, but your opponent would have time to react. Instead, you can make the ramp edit immediately after the floor edit. The last variation is really hard. After confirming the ramp edit and catching the wall, jump again and aim higher than usual to drag more walls an extra layer above yourself. Then place a ramp connecting to the top wall and a ramp to land on. The extra wall and ramp above you prevent you from getting blocked, and you have the element of surprise as you edit through the wall. Try to practice all these variations, and all the other tricks in this video. Take it slow, take it step by step, and move on to the next trick if you get stuck. These building patterns are really hard, but that's the point. They're hard to learn, but they're even harder to counter. Even if you only learn bits and pieces of each trick, you're learning new building fundamentals that will absolutely help you in your build fights. For those of you who made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. I hope it helped, I hope you learned something, and I hope you hop into creative mode right now to start practicing. If nothing helped and you're still struggling, head over to the item shop and plug in the code BILLYBICEP. You'll wake up tomorrow with stronger arms and faster 90s.